The Amilcaric has been, from its release, one of the most loved ships in Star Citizen, voted best in show multiple years running, and for good reason, being one of the largest ships in the game, complete with several decks, a medical bay, and even a shuttle bay built to house its very own bespoke shuttle, the C-8 Pisces, which it was introduced with when it originally came out in the last in-person Citizen Con some years ago. This year though, it's getting a new variant of its little companion, the C-8R, a little starter medical ship with a basic tier medical bed capable of sustaining players until they get some more serious help. And today, we're going to explore this little ambulance and see what it has to offer. And one other thing you might want to explore to see what it has to offer is the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. They now not only help to hide your IP from prying eyes, but go a step further with their new threat protection service. It works against intrusive ads, malware trackers, and malicious websites. I've already personally used them for years after getting fed up with dealing with free VPNs that just didn't work, so I can get access to IP restricted websites while I work from abroad while protecting my personal information. I also use the app on my iPad to let me watch shows like Strange New Worlds, which aren't available in Taiwan. So if you're looking for a reliable VPN service and you want to help support my channel, head on over to nordvpn.com morphologist to get a huge discount on a two-year plan and get four additional months free. That's nordvpn.com morphologist. And if none of this really works for you, you can always get your money back with their 30-day money-back guarantee. So from the outside, the C8R looks pretty much the same as the base Pisces. However, if you look a little bit closer, you'll find that there are actually a couple of differences, beginning with the light bar just above its canopy. When the lights are activated, both it and the landing lights strobe together, announcing that this is not a base Pisces. This is in fact a space ambulance, which is pretty cool actually. Also notable is the lack of two extra sets of size 1 hardpoints as is on the original C8 Pisces. It actually loses both of them in favor of just two size 1 hardpoints, making it a little bit difficult to use in combat, but that's not really the point of this ship. Which is why it shares in the original Pisces measly single size 1 shield generator, two size 1 coolers, a single size 1 power plant, and a single size 1 quantum drive, making it <laughs> not the most tanky ship in the world. Finally, the paint scheme is also different on the C8R from the base Pisces, coming in a stock white and red color scheme in contrast to the much more plain original. Thankfully, what this ship lacks in firepower though is made up for in speed. The Sea at Pisces has already been known for its agility, but the R variant takes it to a higher level. Speed, acceleration, and maneuverability are all slightly better, giving it the ability to get in and out of dangerous situations fairly quickly. Despite this, at a glance, the C8R is still mostly a very slightly modified version of the base C8 hull. The real difference begins on the inside. Stepping onto the ramp, we're greeted immediately with a big difference between the base Pisces and the C8R. You see, it comes with its own decontamination airlock, a feature that we've only previously seen on its much larger parent ship, the Carrick. Good for dealing with pesky zombie viruses, I guess, which, by the way, aren't in the game yet, but hopefully this will be useful someday. The R variant also comes with a bunch of component access hatches here in the back, which are notably not usable. This was a big surprise to me, as usually recent ships have been gold standard right from the get-go, so they don't have to go back and do too much more work on them, but it appears the C8R is not actually up to gold standard yet, so I guess they've just added to that ship tech dead a bit. Stepping through the glass airlock door, which is also a very cool feature, also seen on the Carrick, the midsection of the ship is entirely reimagined. To our immediate left, We'll see now a medical station, complete with an overhead storage bay, medical dispensers, places for various medical gear, and a cabinet that also comes stock with supplies, which is also a new thing that CIG have been doing with newer ships. This is a really cool feature because whenever you reclaim the ship or recall it, it should have this cabinet refilled. You know, maybe there's some <laughs> little uh, servant goblins or something doing it for us. I don't know what the lore of this is, but it's cool to just have this at our fingertips. Just immediately to the left of the cabinet, you'll also find an empty slot. This is actually for the fire extinguisher, which is for the planned future feature of ship fires, which is going to make multi-crew gameplay quite interesting, if you ask me. 
Overall then, this area is really nicely arranged, however I do feel like there was a really big missed opportunity here. It would have been perfect, absolutely 100%, 5 stars or whatever you want to say, if they would have actually put a bunch of medical device slots complete with medical devices ready to go straight from the manufacturer. I mean, we've got these great medical devices specifically for medical gameplay in-game. It just seems like such a missed opportunity to have, you know, slots specifically made for them. I mean, there's not even any in the cabinet down below. I'm not quite sure what Siegi was thinking on this one. I hope they maybe go back and add them when they go standard it or something. It just seems like too perfect an opportunity not to have done this. Across from this well-arranged medical station, minus the absolute missed opportunity of the medical devices, is the medical bed, the actual reason why you might want to buy the C8R. You see, in Star Citizen's universe, this bed is considered a Tier 3 medical bed, which means that it is only capable of healing the least severe Tier 3 injuries a player might sustain. However, even if a player receives a much higher tier injury, such as a tier 1 or 2 injury, the bed can still serve to keep them alive until you take them to a mothership or a station where you'll find much higher tier medical facilities. This makes it very useful in a lot of situations like doing bunker missions or having ground ops with FPS combat where it's likely somebody will get injured. Unfortunately though, this also means that it cannot be used to regenerate like on the Carrick and the Annie Jump. So if you're planning on using it for that, it's not a respawn point. In terms of design then, I think the bed, like the rest of the ship, is reminiscent of the Carrick's interior with a well-arranged palette of grays, whites, and red accenting, tying it nicely together with the anvil design language. Just adjacent to the bed is yet another medical station which replaces what originally was a jump seat for another crew member. It allows a crew member to administer medical aid to an unconscious patient through the ship's medical healing systems. It's not a new feature to the game, but it's fantastic to see it in such a small package. Across from that is a jump seat which is identical to the original base Pisces, so that is still remaining because this is likely going to be used by a co-pilot, somebody who will help you administer medical attention to any of the unfortunate people you pick up and try to heal. Finally though, the flight deck is virtually identical to that of the base Pisces, with the exception of being the color scheme of the interior, which is mostly white. Like the original, it has good visibility, and there are a bunch of multifunction displays for you to customize at need, so it's not much to report on, but it's still good like the base version. On the whole then, for the interior, I find its layout to be really fantastic. It fits quite a lot of program into such a tiny hull, showing off just how good CIG is getting at crafting ship interiors that take full advantage of available space. While there were some small misses, such as the disappointing lack of mount points for medical tools, the design leaves me feeling really satisfied, not least because of the ship's actual usefulness. The C8R is now the smallest and most inexpensive package, allowing players to get a taste of medical gameplay, which is definitely a win in my book, especially in the pocketbook variety. The ship can be had on the website as a standalone ship for 60 bucks and will likely become available in-game for in-game purchase in the next patch, which is 319, not 318, for probably a pretty modest sum. Certainly cheaper than, than the former smallest medical ship, the Drake Cutlass Red. So then what do you think? Is this little space ambulance a good addition to your hangar? Did you pick one up or will you wait for it to be in-game? Let me know down below in the comment section and as always, Thank you guys so much for your support and for watching till the end. I hope to see you guys in the next one.